Hello, welcome to my show. My name is Adrian. This is a series where I interview different people who've inspired me to live a healthier life. Today, I have my friend John with me. You can find him at Carnivore Teacher on YouTube and Carnivore Teacher John on Instagram. So today, John's going to tell us our story, and then we're going to chit chat. He is a wonderful person to come to to learn all the things of Carnivore as a teacher. That's what he does. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here and sharing my story. I do. Well, I've been really excited to have this interview. We actually got to meet in person at Hack Your Health, and mm. you gave me your oh, little point. Yeah. I thought, this is so creative. And I've been watching some of your videos. You really do teach people of every single topic. There was recently the addiction topic. You've talked about the different versions of carnivore. We can go into that, which one you're at currently. And um, so definitely check out his channel, which we'll go into later. But so thank you so much for being here. Could you tell us how did you get here? How did you get to carnivore? Oh, boy. How did I come to carnivore? Well, um, let's see. We're going on six years almost. This January will be six years on low carb. Um, I've been carnivore going on two years. So what I did was I, like many other times in my life, in my 30s and my 40s, I was overweight. You know, most people come to ketovore or carnivore because they want to lose weight. And I was one of those people. And I had tried many diets and they were successful. I lost the weight on a lot of them. A lot of them were, you know, uh, restrict and, you know, exercise a lot. And uh, they worked until they stopped working because you go off of it and you go back to eating what you ate before. And that's what I did. And I always put on the same amount of weight that I lost. And then there was always a little bit more. So I never heard of keto before. It was a new phrase to me almost six years ago. So I, I did a little Googling. I found a YouTube channel. I found Thomas DeLauer. I don't know if you know him. And he was standing at a whiteboard. So here's this muscular, good looking, healthy looking dude, young, very intellectual with an amazing vocabulary on a whiteboard. This is how you start keto. These are the foods you can eat. These are the foods you stay away from. This is what it does. This is what a macronutrient is. These are the three, you know, I was being educated by a teacher um, about how to eat. And I never heard this information from any of the other diets. This was teaching me nutrition and teaching me how to eat. And so keto, of course, is not just animal products, but it's also vegetables, nuts, seeds, and a little bit of fruit. So I thought, well, I'm cutting out all starches and sugars and carbs as much as possible. I can do this. And that's how I started. And within a few weeks, I noticed weight loss. And within a few months, I lost everything I needed to lose. 35 pounds, gone. I had to buy new clothes. Then I had to buy new clothes again. <laughs> and it was amazing. And I thought that was the only purpose of the diet. But I also started feeling amazing, like emotional high. Um, I used to have depression and, and mood swings, highs and lows. It all disappeared. I noticed my lower back pain. I had persistent chronic lower back pain. Never knew what it was from. Thought I pulled a muscle, but it, it would come back constantly. And that disappeared and stayed away. I thought, what the heck is going on here? This is amazing. So of course, because of these amazing benefits other than weight loss, one video led to another video, which led to another person, Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Robert Sivas, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Stan Eckberg, Kim Howerton. There's so many. I have a long YouTube list on my tabs when I pull up YouTube now of all my teachers. And they all come at it from a different angle. And I very slowly, you know, I watched a few a day and I had aha moments coming out of my ears left and right. Like, oh my gosh, I never knew this. I would start jotting them down on my phone in my notes. And I just was, you know, being the, t I'm a middle school teacher. I retired, but I taught for 34 years, middle school students, sixth, seventh and eighth graders. Being a teacher, I can't keep my mouth shut. I had to start a YouTube channel and start talking about this because it wasn't just teaching about 
something from a book. This is something that changed my life for the better, not just the weight loss, but so many wonderful things. And that's how I started a YouTube channel. Then one year into going keto, that means I was eating a lot of nuts, a lot of seeds. I was eating broccoli, asparagus, drinking coffee, uh, coconut oil, coconut, you know, all the things you're allowed to have on keto as long as it was, you know, keep my macronutrients within range. My, my, my carbs had to be 20 total grams or lower per day. I got a kidney stone. I had never had a problem with my kidneys in my life and I had to go to the hospital. So after that extremely painful passing of the kidney stone, I, of course, I Googled and I learned what a calcium oxalate kidney stone is and where it came from. And I realized that when I went keto, I added so many plants to my way of eating, not just meats. I was eating a lot of spinach salads. I was making these shakes with chia seeds and cinnamon and turmeric. And I was just throwing everything that was high oxalate in there. I was eating a lot of dark chocolate that I made myself that I sweetened with monk fruit. Right. And I didn't realize that I had oxalate toxicity and gave myself a kidney stone. So learning curve for me, I learned everything the hard way. <laughs> and uh, I started to slowly pull myself off of all the oxalates. And I had to dump every couple of every three months, I would have an episode, not a kidney stone, but I would have other oxalate dumping episodes that I realized after edu educating myself why I had these until I'm slowly getting these out of my body. It was from all of the plants that I had all my life, but also the enormous amounts that I added when I went keto. So of course, that's when I call myself going into ketovore. Now, ketovore was a word that was um, created by Nisha Berry, which is Dr. Ken Berry's wife. And it's between carnivore and keto. And it's basically... I think it's 10 total grams of carbohydrates or less. And you maybe have a little bit of vegetables on your plate for dinner, maybe a cup of coffee, a little mustard, and maybe a few spices, just way less plants than when I was keto. I did that for three years, felt even better, felt phenomenal. I'm like, why am I feeling even better taking out all these plants? So after watching Dr. Anthony Chafee, who's, who's the plant-free MD, you know, he's total carnivore. I'm like, well, I'm almost there. Let's just take out the rest and see what it feels like. And if I don't notice a difference, I'll go back and have some more plants. So I took out the coffee. It took me a while to stop that, but I did it. I took out the avocado that I had every day because I thought I needed it for the potassium and the fiber, which I learned I don't need. And I stopped the rest of the plants, everything, spices. And I went just beef, lamb, pork, poultry, fish, eggs. And then, of course, no vegetable oils, no seed oils. I stopped that at keto. But I only cook in butter and beef tallow and bacon fat. And boom, another skyrocket of, of health benefits. I noticed I felt even better. I'm like, how could this possibly make me feel, sleep, function, think, better than even ketovore, and it did. And so that's what, how I became a carnivore. I kind of did it unknowingly one year, three years, and then almost two years ago, I switched to carnivore. I'm not going back. All right. You can't, once you taste it, once you realize the benefits, it's hard to go back. You just don't want to do it. So that in a nutshell, there's many more details, but that, that's how I became carnivore as of today. Wow. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like I can't go back. And I have a friend who just started. She's only two weeks in and she's like, I don't know if I can hack it. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, take the pressure off. Yeah. But, and she asked, like, do you think you'll ever go back? No, because this is the best I've ever felt. So what were, did you have any other conditions that kind of cleared up? Did you ever have any mental health? Did you have any heart? Did you have any blood pressure, any diabetes? Uh, blood pressure was up a little bit, not to the point where I needed medication. Uh, but I noticed, cause I have my own blood pressure cup. My blood pressure's down 
because my arteries are more malleable because they're not glycated with sugar. But I found that out through research why it's down. Um, I mentioned my lower back. That was a big one. I had chronic inappropriate inflammation from all the seed oils from the standard American diet and sugar. And it showed up in my lower back. That's my weak spot. And that disappeared, which is amazing. Uh, mental health, I, was, I would get depressed from time to time. I would have mood swings and that's gone completely gone. I went through some really sad times with my parents the last couple of years. Um, my father was diagnosed with ALS and he went down here real fast and he died. And then a year later, my mother had bladder cancer and then she died. And I thought to myself, how am I handling this? It was sad. You know, I cried because of the deaths and everything, but it was not, I noticed it was not the same. I would have been a freaking mess. I would have been emotions all over the place and lashing out at people and just having mood swings. And it didn't happen. I was really calm and level and stable through those terrible times in my life. That's kind of when I really noticed uh, how this can improve your mood and your 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 self-control and your, your conscious self your, your identity and your, your confidence is improved. And I just noticed all of that um, improved. The, the guy that you met at Hack Your Health is not the guy you would have met a couple of years before that. All right, mm -hmm. I, was, I was outgoing and confident and I didn't have that. I was very shy. I'm, I'm kind of an introvert anyway, but I was very introverted before this. So this has helped me feel confident. It's improved my mood. Um, Oh, little things. I had skin tags, which is a sign of insulin resistance. I had, you know, some acne that I don't get anymore. Um, what else did I used to have? Oh, I have, I'm going to still say I have atrial fibrillation. The atrium is the top part of the heart. And AFib is when it gets out of sync and the blood pools in the top part of the heart. And it can cause a stroke. It's very dangerous. And I was taking medicine for that, two different medicines that raised my blood sugar. And when I went keto and then ketovore, I slowly de-prescribed myself with the, with the uh, you know, assistance of my cardiologist. I slowly took myself off those medicines to see if I would stay in sinus rhythm and not go into AFib, and I did. So talking to Dr. Sean Baker, I brought this up and he seems to think that, you know, it's possible that the part of my heart that was having the misfirings are repairing themselves because I'm eating the proper human diet. We, we and don't you're really, not inflamed. And I'm not inflamed. So the, I think inflammation, oxidative stress is the big one that causes mm -hmm. all these issues for people. And that's all gone because I'm not putting that stuff in my body. Uh, well, I am so sorry for your loss of your parents. Sorry. Um, but I, I feel the same way. It's, it's the craziest thing. The same things that used to knock me down emotionally for maybe days, maybe weeks. Now it's minutes. Like it, it's still there. It's still a real thing. Yeah. But, but then somehow we go into positivity, which is why I think meetups are so wonderful. So many people, including myself, I will go to a meetup, not knowing a single human being. And somehow it's a darn good time. <laughs> we have that common we have that in common that we have, we have something in common. We're like war buddies. We, we, we've been through it all. We've, we have a lot of similar experiences. We want to share our experiences with each other because we're having success and we're happy about it. That's why we have such a great time at these events. I've been to several of them. Hack your health. That last one was the best I've ever been to. Are you coming to Florida? Yes. I've already bought my ticket. Awesome. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I live in Florida, so it's just a drive. I'm going to drive over to Tampa and I just have to pay for the hotel. So it's going to be a lot cheaper without the plane ticket. <laughs> so I'm happy about that. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. My friend Ellie lives in Florida too. She's coming on over and yeah. it's going to be a great time. Great. Um, so tell us about like the day-to-day -day life. Like do, how do you now, I remember hearing that you are now a retired teacher. Mm -hmm. How do you afford eating this way? People are, <laughs> people think this is so expensive and it's crazy. How do you afford it? Good question. And I get that question a lot. It's too expensive. Well, ground beef, okay, butter, 
It's not mm-hmm. very expensive to have ground beef and butter. Uh, there's a lot of, of healthy foods that we can order that are in the beef, lamb, pork, poultry, fish, and eggs category. Eggs are not that expensive. Now, I buy the more expensive eggs. I buy pasture-raised. But there's so much in an egg, so much nutrition in a pasture-raised egg. And there's so much nutrition in fatty red meat. And it doesn't have to be expensive meat. Uh, people who are really restricted, I mean, you can have, if you read the ingredients, you can have hot dogs and sausages and lunch meat. It's not the best, but it's way better than a sandwich, peanut butter and jelly sandwich or, a, or, or something from a vending machine. Uh, it's, it's processed meat, but it's not, if you can, you can find a lot of clean processed meat. So it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, I'm living off of a pension because I've taught many, many years, my whole career. So I do receive a pension. I'm really blessed and lucky to have that. Um, I also saved a lot of money while I was teaching. So I knew that I could retire at a certain age. I retired at 57. I'm 59 years old now. And I am actually saving money at the grocery store. I'm not spending money on Doritos and cereal and ice cream and uh, cl- the Klondike bars and Pop-Tarts and all the crap I used to eat. I just, I, buy, I eat two meals a day and I eat until it stops tasting good, till I'm full. And I don't really want a snack. So it's actually, even though a steak costs more, than uh, mac and cheese. When you eat mac and cheese, you're not just eating the mac and cheese, you're eating all this other crap because it's not filling you up and it's stimulating more hunger. When I, when I have, every once in a while, we'll have a ribeye, um, outside skirt steak, uh, but most of the time it's, uh, it's a cheaper steak or it's ground beef or it's, you know, we have chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what are we having tonight? Tonight is a, is a porterhouse. I got on sale. I look for sales, uh, sales before, during, and after holidays. You're going to find meats on sale. And it's not that expensive. It really isn't because you're saving money, not only on that, but you're saving money on medical expenses. You're saving Mm. money on, like, I don't buy things to put on my body anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't put creams and lotions and, and deodorants and suntan lotion. I use tallow soap. And I use just a plain deodorant that doesn't have a lot. Like I'm saving money in that area too, because I've learned about, you know, I don't buy bottled water. Uh, So many changes, not even in the food category. I made a lot of other little changes that I learned along the way that are making me healthier. They're making me spend less money, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Even if I spent more money, I'd be investing in myself, in my health, in my long-term health. But I'm not. I'm not spending a lot of money. So uh, it is affordable. Um, I could tell you from a retired guy who's living on a pension, believe me, it's affordable. (laughs) I recently made my husband a recipe. He loves this Olive Garden soup and the ingredients in soup Mm -hmm. were $120 because you got to buy all the spices. It was a pot of soup. But it needed these spices and it needed all this and all that. And, you know, you never reuse those things and they're just sitting there in your cupboards. And it was so expensive to just make this soup. Can I share my soup recipe with you? Is it beef and water and salt? It's close. It's the most amazing. I just created it. It's, I made a video when it's my yes, bone broth. Tell my, us. Tell my us bro- the secret soup. All right, my bone broth soup. So I every time we have a, a T-bone steak, a, a, a bone and ribeye, tonight's porterhouse, anytime there's bones left over, they go in a bag. They go in my freezer until the bag gets full, a big bag, a freezer bag. When the bag gets full, I take out my crock pot. I take it outside on the porch. I plug it in for 12 hours on high. I fill it up with filtered water. And I put some salt in there and I let it just cook Mm -hmm. bones and water and salt for 12 hours. And when it's done, I take a strainer. I go out into the the back outside and I take my mason jars and I take all the bones out and I just pour them into the mason jars, put them in the refrigerator. The next day I've got a lip of fat at the top that I can use. It's beef tallow. And then I have this amazing gelatin Mm -hmm. bone broth. It's jiggly. That's all the collagen that came out of the bones. It is so freaking healthy for you. So I take that. I have, I have jars of it in my refrigerator right now. I take that. I put some in the pot on the stove. I 
I, I bring it up to not a boil, but a simmer. And then I take four pasture raised eggs. I break them in there. I let the bone broth cook the eggs. Mm. Oh, it's so good. I add a little more salt. I will put uh, anything left over from the night before. So if it's lamb, if it's beef, if it's ground beef, even little pieces of salmon, salmon makes it taste really good or shrimp. I cut it up. I put that in there. I mix that all up. And then to top it off, I put like two or three tablespoons of butter. All right. I let that melt in there. I pour that into my bowl. It is the most amazing, delicious soup I've ever tasted out or in restaurant, home, can. It's delicious. I should sell it. <laughs> that does well, sound amazing. It's good. And I just, let me try this. Let me try that. Let me try that. And I've come up with this little thing I do like a couple times a week. And that's my lunch a couple times a week is a bone broth soup. And you can put anything in it, but the, that bone broth is, is the base. It's not expensive because you've no, got all you these reuse. You're reusing if all the stuff that's left over. I never throw meat out. I can always cut it up and use it the next day for other things. And, and, that, and if I don't have meat, I, I, I cook up some, some ground beef and then I throw the ground beef in there with all the fat. I used to throw fat away. <laughs> now I'm eating all the fat and adding more fat. It's so delicious. And I know that didn't cost a hundred dollars. <laughs> when I first started this, I was buying beef suet from a butcher oh, yeah. and can. then I was rendering it down and canning some tallow. And I just kept doing that. All right. Now I haven't done that in like a year because I just keep my beef drippings. Like if I yeah. air fry something, I pour those beef drippings in and they are the most tasty. So I like hardly buy fat anymore because we're reusing and, and that, I save my yeah. bones too. And reuse. That, and that beef drippings has all the flavor, you know, if it's bacon, if it's, it's whatever so it is, good. that's what makes all of our meats taste good is the, the fat that's in them. It's, it's, you know, we're just, both of us are just smiling ear to ear because we're talking about our food that we love that makes us feel great. And it lasts for so long. I swear I'm grocery shopping like maybe twice a month and I have four kids. Oh, wow. Good. Because you know, we're we, same thing. Like maybe let's say I cook four steaks and there's leftovers or six steaks. I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. We save it. We eat it for lunch the next day. It goes, you don't throw it out like you're throwing lettuce and all yeah. this, all the plant stuff starts to go bad in the refrigerator and it, because the, you know, the gases develop and then it starts to ferment. It starts to stink. And you get that with meat, which means it doesn't happen in our intestines or our colon either. Right. That's what plants and legumes do in your cuts. That's why people who are eating lots of plants and legumes are getting smelly gas and bloating. It's the same thing that happens in the containers in the refrigerator. If you think about it. Yeah. I was just talking to Dr. Chafee too. He said that the fiber actually slows your digestion. It does. it does. So here we think, oh, we're making better stools. And no, you're making it worse <laughs> on top it, of the fermenting that's happening in your gut. People see their stool and they, they see that it's big and it's frequent and they think that's healthy. And it's also what they're used to having all their life. And so when they go carnivore and they stop having these gigantic frequent stools, they think something's wrong and they have to understand, no, we're not supposed to have those kinds of stools. They're supposed to be, you know, less frequent and certainly not gassy and smelly and bloating. And that's another benefit of, of eating carnivores. Your body's absorbing all the nutrition. There's very little waste, you know, there's mm -hmm. very little waste and the waste is, uh, it's, it's the cell linings in your intestines and in your walls. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, any, any, we're not eating fiber. So it's just, we're, we're absorbing everything. Talk about being efficient, right? When, yeah. when you're buying food, you're buying it, you're eating it, you're absorbing most of it. It's great. Yeah. So I should have prepped you for this question, but hopefully since you're a teacher, you uh -oh. can give us a good answer. I'll try. <laughs> I would love to talk about as a teacher, you got to see every day, the free breakfast and the, and the paid for lunch. And I only recently saw what it is and it's so commercialized. And I'm wondering if you've seen that, what were you seeing? You know, cause we talked earlier about peanut butter and jelly. That's a pretty common thing that a parent would make. What's wrong with peanut butter jelly? What's wrong with some of the food? Oh gosh, where do I start? <laughs> I'll try to keep it brief. Okay. In, I, I taught in public middle school 
they serve a free breakfast and for some kids who are eligible or free or reduced lunch and the breakfast is it's it's french toast sticks breaded deep fried in peanut oil sprinkled with confectioner sugar and then syrup okay and it probably has you know egg coating on the outside but it's or egg flavored something right it's something on the outside so it's breaded it's deep fried it's sprinkled with confectioner sugar and then you know syrup uh then they have a little package of like uh cranberry something flavored they're almost like gummy bears and they all threw them across the cafeteria they didn't eat them anyway um juice boxes skim milk they didn't have any whole milk at all they all went to two percent and skim like they had a choice between one or two percent or skim there wasn't even any whole milk anymore uh they had you know the juice boxes of the different juices so and then the kids out of their backpack would pull out their bags of candy and their bags of junk that they would bring from home and we had to have you know we would have morning duty some some of the teachers we'd had to take turns or we had lunch duty or we had to go pick our kids up from lunch and escort them back to class and i saw with my own eyes all the trays all the plates and it's nauseating no i thought it was nauseating before i even went keto ketovore carnivore i thought i would never eat this food i used to only buy the salads <laughs> at, the, at the salad bar in the cafeteria and pouring, squeezing all the seed oil dressing on it. But I didn't know any better back then, but I thought I was eating healthier. Mm -hmm. The crap that these kids are fed is absolutely disgusting, right? They'll have fried chicken sometimes, but of course it's all breaded and deep fried in, in the peanut oil and the spaghetti, the, the, the macaroni, uh, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely horrible. And then we're sending them back into the classroom to try to sit and concentrate and their poor little bodies, you know, their insulin, their sugar, their glucagon, their it's, it's going haywire along with their estrogen and their testosterone because they're going through adolescence they're going through puberty. I mean, it was, it was so obvious. These kids were just wired. Uh, when we would have testing every year, they would give us in our testing bag all the testing materials and then they would give us snacks to give the kids they would give us mints because the peppermint is supposed to stimulate your brain well it was all sugar so we were giving the kids sugar they'd fall asleep <laughs> afterwards there's just so many things wrong and and i felt frustrated because i can't do anything it's not mm -hmm. my place i'm not in control i'm not the cafeteria manager i'm not the principal um Every once in a while, my students, the topic of food would come up and I would tell them what I eat. And they looked at me like I was from Mars. Like, you don't eat any sugar? You don't eat any bread? Oh, Mr. Lespina, I don't, I don't know how you do that. And you know, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of sad. So, so if you could swap those foods out, because now you've just told us like the nightmare that is happening and this is happening all over the country because most of the lunch programs are national. Yeah. We're being um, subsidized to have these foods. And the reason that I think we're doing it is because it'd be one second. It's all right. Let him in. It makes a good video. <laughs> hey, fella. What's his name? This is Volmer. Volmer, that's a unique yeah, name. Yeah, we named him after a friend. Here's I buddy. like unique names. Being a John, I like unique names. <laughs> yeah, my mother-in-law is horrified. <laughs> what, Volmer? I we like love our friend Volmer. Volmer. Um, but, buddy, you have to do that in the other room. But if you could make swaps for kids, would you send a peanut butter and jelly or like no, what would be better? No, no, uh, absolutely not. Peanut, peanuts are legumes, peanut, but it's a bean and it's inflammatory and it's genetically modified and it has mold. And of course they're adding seed oils to regular peanut butter. It's very hard to find that other kind of peanut butter and jelly is just all sugar and it's on bread, which is starch, which turns into sugar. I mean, it's people think it's protein. It's protein, right? Which there's some protein in there. Yes, there is. <laughs> I would say there's, you know, 10 other bad things to that one good thing in there. So, all right, what did, I'll tell you what I took for lunch when I ate and what kids could probably take to lunch. You have to think, you have to prep the night before. Years ago, before cafeteria parents, kids often came to school with lunch boxes and bags of lunch. I had a lunch box. I had a laughing lunch box. 
metal one that opens up with the thermos and with the whole milk in there and everything. And my mother would make me things and put them in there. So it can be done. You have to think the night before. So I would do, I would take my leftover meat from the night before. I would, I actually kind of made a bone broth soup at school, but I put them in glass jars. I packed this little bag. I took it into school. I microwaved everything. And I kind of made my own little thing that I inhaled in the 30 minutes that they give us for lunch. Um, but, you know, kids can take in cheese and lunch meat. And uh, there's, you know, not Lunchables because that's full of crap. But you can you can make, you know, like, even what I took to a party the other day, I took a skirt steak. We cooked it on the grill. We let it cool. The next day, we cut it up into pieces, put it on a plate with cheese, hard-boiled eggs. Absolutely delicious. Absolutely. And you can make your own mayonnaise with bacon or butter mayonnaise. Um that's so healthy. There are alternatives that are so healthy for you, but you do have to prep for them. You have to make them ahead of time. You have to pack little freezies in the bag so they don't go, you know, they don't get too warm while they're waiting for lunch, but it can be done. I've been throwing a steak in the air fryer every morning and then okay. sending that with them. There you eggs. Go bacon, meatballs, and then this is where we can go back to and rely on some of those processed meats. Yeah. Even though that's not optimal, it's something they will eat. It's better than peanut butter and jelly. It's better than the processed school lunches. Uh, we can rely on that. So do you have any tips for us for eating out? Do you ever go out to eat? Oh boy. Okay. My eating out talk. <laughs> um, I was just on a cruise. So we cruise a lot in South Florida because the ports are so close and we get a Florida discount and you get to go see all these cool countries. So I'm eating on the ship. All right. There's food everywhere. But even when I go into a restaurant, I do the same procedure. I have the menu. I look for the meat. I always find a steak. If it's a cheaper restaurant, I'm getting a hamburger. And as soon as it's time for them to come around to me and say, hello, I have a vegetable seed oil allergy. You have to speak their language. That's anything that comes from a plant. So it's canola, it's cor corn oil, it's soybean oil, it's safflower oil, it's margarine, it's the spread. I have to have real butter. Can you cook my steak in real butter? Can you put it on a separate pan or not put seed oil on the grill? So I have a discussion with the server and so many times the cook walks out and talks to me, who's the person with the oil, with the hour? And then they want clarification, which makes me feel good. And I know they're going to cook it the way I want it. So I get a steak and I just say, please put the meat on the plate. I don't want anything else. Don't put any size. Don't put any, no, no, are you sure you don't want the broth? No, are you sure? You, are, you sure are you sure you could give it to somebody? Just put the meat on the plate <laughs> and I get my way, but sometimes I have to push it a lot. And I'm fairly confident because I'm very stern about it. This is my money. It's my food. They need to do it my way. And when they hear the word allergy, most of them are thinking lawsuit. I don't want to have somebody choke. So they're very willing to help you. And so that's how I eat out. And I, I eat a steak or a hamburger when I go out. And I usually am not satisfied because I really should have to pay for two to eat the amount that I would eat at home because they're giving you a portion based on, you know, you're also getting all this other crap with it, right? And I'm just getting the meat. So when I eat out, I'm usually not satisfied and I don't want to spend double. I don't know. How about you? Same here. Yeah. Same here. I like to pick restaurants where I know they will let me order just burger patties like Buffalo Wild Wings, Applebee's. Oh, there you go. Um, but I know at Applebee's, the rest of my family is only going to get a meal this big and it's going to be $75. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You yeah. know, so you're right. You win some, you lose yeah, some. Yeah, eating like, out is not. I just prefer to eat home at this point. I eat home more now than I ever have in my entire life. Yeah, I used to look forward to going out to dinner on Friday nights after a long week of work. And then we'd go Saturday also to treat ourselves. And I ate everything in sight. You know, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm, I'm real picky. And when I have to go out, now it's a chore. I'm like, oh, we have a gathering. We have a birthday. All right, so I'll pull the menu up way ahead of time and think, all right, what can I get? I'm looking online here. All right, now I know what I'm going to order when I go in there and I feel confident. And I'm going to celebrate their birthday. I'm not going to eat, even though I'm going to eat. You know, it's, it's a different mentality. You don't go. Food is not a reward. It's not a drug. It's not a pleasure anymore. No matter where you eat it, it's nutrition. 
and I want to make sure I'm getting the, the best I can and not crap. To me, seed oil, I'd rather eat sugar. I'd rather eat some starch than to put any seed oil in my body. My body can recognize sugar and starch. My body does not recognize the machine lubricant, canola oil or soybean oil. So that's my big stink when I go into a restaurant. It's all about the seed oil. I can control everything else. I can't control what they're throwing on the grill or rubbing on the meat behind the door there. So I have to speak up. And it's concerning the shelf life in your body. Is it like seven years? What did I hear? I heard four, four or five years to get all of the um, seed oils out. But then I don't know if that's correct. I heard four. So I notice a difference because I don't get a sunburn in the South Florida mm. sun anymore. I get tan and I can stay out longer. So I know my skin cells are different, <laughs> are healthier for sure. I've burnt my whole life. I've been the red girl. No, no more. I'm like literally getting that, tan. That, that's amazing. It is so wonderful. I stopped wearing the sunglasses too. You know, I started to stop doing that too. When my brother, I was at my sister and brother's last July or June. When was it? July. And we were in New Jersey. And my brother is three years younger than I. And we were talking about our parents. You know, we were all sharing memories about my parents. My parents had to wear dark glasses all the time. And my brother's like, I have to start doing that now. It's starting to bother me. And I said, you know what? I know you don't want to hear this because he's sick of hearing me talk about carnivore. I said, but I don't even need to wear sunglasses anymore. I only wear them if it's a glare in my eyes and I'm driving. Like, I, I don't want to wear them. And then mentally, I know circadian rhythm wise, I want the sun to come in during the day because it's sending all the correct signals to my brain about being alert and awake during daylight hours. So I have the mental part of it. I also just, I don't, and I have very light blue eyes. I don't squint like I used to in the sunlight. It's pretty amazing. Do you look at the sun every day? Do you do any, do you do any of the body hacks? Do you do the red light therapy? Okay. Do you wear the, the, do you wear the orange, uh, blue I, have, blockers. I have blue blockers. I put them on at eight o'clock at night because we watch Netflix before we go to bed and I'm on the computer and I don't want to just like for two hours stop because I think I'm addicted to my phone and my computer. I mean, I could, I could just read a book, but I'm wearing blue blockers and uh, I know it helps my sleep. And I know mentally that I'm, you know, I'm telling my body, you know, it's, it's dark time. You know, I don't, I'm not eating and the sun is down and I'm blocking. Um, grounding. I do I live in South Florida. We are always barefoot anyway. I have a concrete slab with tile outside the front yard. I'm always out in my bare feet. So I know I'm grounding. We go to the beach a lot. Um, so I never knew what it was. And now I know what it is. So every time I step on the ground with my bare feet, I'm like, I'm grounding. I'm, gr <laughs> I'm lowering my blood pressure. Right. And it's true. There's, there's a whole theory behind that with grounding. What else am I hacking? I changed my water. I put a reverse osmosis filter, uh, triple or quadruple filter under my kitchen sink. I installed it myself. It cost a lot of money, but I think it's worth it with its own little dispenser. It's taking out the fluoride, the you know, all the trace elements that are bad. And then I'm adding Redmond Relight to re-electrolyte my, my drinking water that's that I carry around with me every day that's ice cold. And what else did I hack? I threw out all my Teflon pans. I only use wooden spatulas. I won't use or metal. I won't use the plastic spatulas. I have Tupperware, but I'll only put cold stuff in it. I will never reheat anything in the plastic. I learned about plastic and bisphenol A. Um, just everything. I try to get plastics as much out of my life as possible um, that I that I have control over. So basically, I'm trying to take control of the things that I have control over and making incremental changes. And I, you know, I don't wear suntan lotion anymore. I don't, you know, I change my deodorant. I change my, my shampoo. I change my soap to tallow soap. All these little hacks um, really, I think they all, they're little and they all add up and they make a big difference as well as eating properly for, for, for amazing health. And I think of the average guy or girl out there that's not doing any of this you know, wearing the makeup and all the suntan lotion and the hairspray and the lotion and the creams and the perfume or the cologne and uh, drinking water bottle water 
and you know, eating all the food in the rest. I just think of what a difference, what a contrast compared to how I'm living my life. And I think I notice a huge difference from before. I have no idea if I am noticing a difference, but what I do know is I'm no longer stacking the toxins. Yes. Because you might not feel it. You might not feel your dish soap. You might not feel your laundry detergent. You might not feel the nail polish, but it is stacking. Yeah. And yeah. it is causing autoimmune illnesses through the roof. Uh, metabolic issues are through the roof. Hormone issues through the roof. Yeah. Absolutely. And we, we have a bandwidth that's very wide when we're in our teens and 20s. We can get away with a lot of stuff and we can and we don't feel it. And we tend to be healthier. But when we hit our 30s, 40s and 50s, our bandwidth gets narrower and those things add up. They stack up. You start to feel it. Aches, pains. People start feeling old. And we're told, oh, you know, I, I'm almost 60. I'm supposed to feel that way, right? I'm not supposed to be able to bend down and tie my sneaker with going, Ugh, <laughs> right? And that's not true. That is not true. We are not supposed to feel that way for a very, very long time. And, and we start to feel that way because we have lost that ability. Our, our liver isn't as efficient. Our kidneys are not as efficient filtering out all these toxins and they're they're toxifying us and we're feeling you know chemically toxic we're feeling achy irritable when we have and people just don't know because they they don't know they're in a fog they're in a fog of their own eating and living and i don't know how to we, you and i are hoping that that maybe somebody's going to watch this video and it's going to plant a seed and it's going to take them further and further and further. And they're going to come out of that fog, you know, take the red pill, the blue pill, you know, and you're going to realize and wake up and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've been doing this to myself. And then we make changes and it's, these are free or very inexpensive changes. And education is free. YouTube is free. You know, you've got to watch all the ads and everything and hit skip, but it's, we're not paying a company big bucks for a product right? For good health. And, and I just, I just love that aspect of it because it's real. There's very little to buy here. You buy meat and preferably in our community, you buy it from your neighbor. If you can. Yeah. Yeah. If that's a thing, I mean, preferably you're buying local. So this isn't like some big amazing sales thing. One thing with the getting older is how is your brain? Because we're being told it's totally normal to start losing brain function. Ha <laughs> ha. But it used to be that we had these elders that we went to for wisdom and knowledge. Um, how has your brain felt any different um, since going carnivore? All right. I tell this story. Um, when I went keto and then ketovore, I was still teaching. And I had, we have to recertify every five years to keep our certification as a public school teacher. So my five years, you know, at that point was up at that time. I recertified every five years and I hated doing this. I had to take classes, had to do online courses. I had to write papers, submit them. Then you take the final exam. If you didn't pass, you had to keep taking it. I, just, I hated it, hated it. And uh, this last time was like, taking candy from a baby. I'm like, why? And my comprehension was through the roof. My focus was dead on. I wrote the paper, the most fluent, most beautiful thing. I've, it's like, I can write. I, I, maybe I should write a book. I have this ability now. Where did this come from? And I passed the test. I aced the fun. I mean, I got the credits and I'm like, what the, that was weird. Oh my gosh. What a contrast from all the other five years before when I had to retake this. This has to be my way of eating that has given me mental clarity, mental focus, um, articulate. I'm able to find my words and express myself. And I really do believe that when we are not eating properly, uh, you know, the sugar, the way it glycates our cells and can cause insulin resistance anywhere in the body, it can cause ins insulin resistance up here. And a lot of doctors are now terming Alzheimer's as a type three diabetes. Uh, PCOS is sometimes termed as a type four diabetes, polycystic ovarian. Um, it's 
all related back to the insulin resistance. Over, over many decades of, of excess starch, carbs, and sugar, the body can't handle it anymore and resists it. And it causes, and it's the same thing with the brain. The brain loves ketones. It has a choice. And let's say there's equal amount of glucose and equal amount of ketones. It will choose the ketones over the glucose if it has a choice. And so this is why our brains are firing on all cylinders when we're eating properly and why, why we feel well. Okay. My last question is, have you had any blood work done? Because people are under the assumption you've been doing this for a while. Are you about to die? Good question. I get a physical once a year. I did before keto carnivore and I still do it because I want to see my numbers. I'm, I'm very different now. I go into the doctor's office. I'm going to do it again. I have an appointment in about two weeks actually for my annual. And I go in with a book from Dr. Ken Berry and Kim Howerton called, what's it called? Something about labs, a uh, common sense labs. And I open to the pages that I've earmarked. And I say, after the doctor does the physical for me, um, he needs to do the prescription to order the blood labs. This is what I want. I want a PSA because I'm a guy. I want to see how my prostate, prostate specific antigen is. I want a hemoglobin A1C. I know I don't have diabetes, but I want to see what my HbA1c is. I want a fasting insulin because that's the most important marker of all the blood markers and they will not order it. So I often have to pay for that on my own and insurance won't cover it. I don't care. I'm going to pay for it on my own. And then I get, uh, you know, the standard, there's a standard list for all the liver enzymes and the kidney filtration rate and all of that stuff. So I get all my blood labs come and I have them from the last 10 years and I can pull them all like the last seven or eight, I can pull them all up on my phone and go from year to year. It's really cool to compare. And the only, everything has improved. Uh, my vitamin B has gone up, you know, things have gone up. My cholesterol skyrocketed, skyrocketed. I used to be uh, my, my LDL used to be 120 and they said that was high and they wanted me to be on a statin, which I was on in my thirties, which gave me body aches and cramps. I took myself off of the statins then, but now my LDL is almost 400. My HDL is almost 90. My triglycerides are all the way down into the forties. And if you, I don't know if you know about the trifecta and everything and the lean mass hyperresponder concept, but um, my cholesterol is not from the food I'm eating. It's mostly my body is making it for a reason, because it's making my bile, which breaks down my fats that I'm eating. It's making all my testosterone and my other hormones. It's producing really strong myelin sheathing, you know, the insulation around my axons and my neurons. It's... Uh, helping me make vitamin D. It's doing a lot of things for me. And a lot of the newer studies are showing that longevity is associated with a higher LDL at my age range. So I'm not worried at all about that. Then I went and got a coronary artery calcium scan where they scan my heart to see how much calcium is in there. And the optimal score is a zero. And I have a zero. That was last year at age 58. So I'm really confident in my health and I want to continue eating this way because I know that all my markers are perfect. My HbA1c is, is uh, 5.2. Um, I told you some of my other numbers. I'm Other than the cholesterol, which is not bad. Everybody thinks it's bad. But because my triglycerides are low and my HDL is high, the LDL, I'm a lean mass hyper responder. I'm not, I don't know if I'm so lean but my cholesterol, I don't have any placking, so I, I know I'm safe. And I'm going to continue to eat this way because I don't know what the alternative would be. Well, I don't want to lower my cholesterol. And that's a hard argument to have for people because so many people are like, their feet are in cement about cholesterol. Yes. We are brainwashed about saturated fat and cholesterol. It's so, I have to have this discussion with so many people and I have so much knowledge and I have to start at the base where they don't know. And I have to slow down and be the teacher. And I get all excited because I want to say, you got to understand what I got to understand. And, 
<laughs> and they don't they, they can't possibly grasp it yet. They don't know who Ansel Keys was and uh, the and, and the, the seven countries study all the things that went wrong and all the things that we learned that were incorrect. So my blood labs going to get another set. They're going to be as perfect as they were the year before and the year before, I'm sure. But I like comparing them and seeing them. I could pull them up right now and show you on the screen if you wanted to. It's kind of cool to have them on hand, you know, in my health app, my iPhone. I just had blood run and I can't wait for it to come back. Like I'm going to call them as soon as we're done here because the answers are in. It just didn't feed to my oh, you're portal fine. for some reason. You're gonna, you you're gonna, st your you're gonna lab? stare at them, and you're gonna, you're gonna Google, you know, the different things. Oh, go, I got the book. Oh, okay, I, okay. I got the book. What is it again? Um, um, Common Sense Labs. Common Sense Labs. I got the book this time. Yeah, it's a good. So it's, I'm it's very it. excited to see because I it. eat a lot of sardines, oh, and good. people are like, "Oh my gosh, you're gonna have horrible heavy metals." Uh, well, now I did excited. learn. I did learn recently, just yesterday, or even this morning, uh, somebody was talking to me on Twitter on X about sardines. If your sardines are sourced from the Baltic Sea or something, there's more mercury in there. If they're sourced in Scandinavia, there's less mercury. So it's like, oh my gosh, really? See, I'm still learning. I ran over to my cupboard. I pulled it out to see what the source was. So you still have to watch the heavy metal toxins, but with smash fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, herring, and sardines, they're all small. And what do they eat? They eat kelp. They're eating plant matter, which has no mercury or anything in it. So you're safe. The Afraid. reason we're not going back is because of education. It's because of channels like yours. Okay. I don't want to go back because I don't find it appealing to be sick. I don't find it appealing to be inflamed. I just, I don't find it appealing to know that I'm killing my metabolism by eating processed foods. So I'd like to show your channel so people can go out and find it and watch you have cooking videos you have interviews and you have educational videos and i believe sometimes you're live with the masterminds mm -hmm. and you're live on your own there's a lot of good stuff in here i'm trying to put a variety in there um i'm, I'm working on two videos now uh what i eat in a week so I'm compiling mm. pictures. I'm going to make that um, how I work out in a week. I'm compiling that so I can make a video on that. Ooh, I like that. So it's part of this is getting stronger too. It is. It is. And we could do a whole nother topic on, on working out, you know, what, what works best for different people because we have to move. Uh, we also have to take care of our, our uh, emotional health, uh, manage stress, whether it's prayer or meditation or breathing, we have to take care of that too. As a teacher, I know, believe me, <laughs> you have to manage your stress or else it will eat you up alive and it raises your blood sugar and, and other problems, you know, your cortisol. So managing stress is a big part of it as well. So uh, yeah, I, I try to get a, a variety on my channel and I also push it out to not just Instagram, but also X and um, LinkedIn Believe it or not, a lot of people watch my stuff from LinkedIn, even though it's not a job search thing. And the new one, Threads, which was supposed to be the alternative for X, and Facebook. I'm also on Facebook. So I just I take the same stuff and shoot it out to all of those, hoping I can reach a lot of people. And um, I'm, I'm, it, my channel's growing. I'm, I'm approaching 3,500, 4,000. So uh, I had to restart it last January because I lost it all. Because I had to, um, I deleted everything by accident because I was trying to fix something and all the, everything disappeared. So I started from scratch in January. Yeah, it was like a death in the family. I was mourning. I was depressed. <laughs> I'm like, oh God. But I now have more uh, subscribers than I did in January. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm, I'm reaching people. That sounds like something I would do. I don't know if you ever watched Lioness Lifestyle Live, but now on multiple locations, instead of exiting out early, I've accidentally hit end recording oh, so the whole that... live went black and nobody got it you mean it didn't record well it was a live i ended oh you live. You, cut, you chopped everybody off by accident okay. instead of exiting out of the live i ended the live right, and then so... there were the funniest comments that said don't hit the red button what is this doing? <laughs> you had a what is this button do moment oh my gosh i I am new to StreamYard as well. So I, I'm doing my third live tomorrow night. 
Um, you're welcome to join if you want. If if you want, I can give you the link. And uh, I, I, you know, I'm not very good at all the settings either. I'm like, oh, what do I do? Do I I click leave studio if I need to come back in but not end it? I learned that. Uh, but uh, all the other little little ditties, you know, I am a master at making the worst mistake and learning from it. I lost all my channel. <laughs> I got a kidney stone, you name it. I've done it. And I, I could tell people not to do certain things because I've been there. <laughs> if you first, I'm going to give my answer, but if you could give two tips to a new person, what would they be? My first one would be after you get into this, can't go to a meetup. You are not alone. You feel alone, oh. but you're not. And here is John and I, and some of our new yeah. friends at a recent at hack your health this year. And so go to a meetup. What would you tell people? Two things, brand new. Get on a Facebook live, uh, get on a Facebook group or a Twitter group, Carnivore. We are all out there sharing our experiences, encouraging one another. Uh, you'll hear about these wonderful symposiums and gatherings that if you want to, you can travel to them. And one may be in your city uh invest in it it is an investment in your health your future and you meet new friends and all those people we ate together i mean it just was i i already paid for next year's which is not even it's next november i paid for it already that's how excited i am to go to these so any new people you're not you don't want to be in this alone you want to be in it with everybody else come on to our lives watch our facebooks and, and learn and send emails and request things. Say, hey, can I talk to you? And people will talk with you uh, and stream with you. And, and you're not alone for sure. And you have all the support in the world. And you don't need to buy a book. You don't need to pay for a program. I mean, there's lots of great books out there. I bought a couple. Um, but it's, uh, it's a wonderful support system, all these people. Yeah. Most of us respond to every single message we get. I do. And that's free. And so absolutely, I agree. So, well, John, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for coming on my channel. I can't wait to see what Hack Your Health. Maybe we'll see each other sooner. Who knows? Hopefully sooner. Uh, yep, definitely. But I really Adrian. enjoyed this. All if right. If you guys like this, please like, subscribe, and share. And be sure to go over to John's channel and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much.